couple of years down the road, you go home. The Hamlet. Dang. Burnham would drive. McLean, Virginia. You go home, you know, as you kind of like have done in the past, you know, nothing necessarily special. It's just when you're going to go home and see friends and family, you know, just to visit home, just to go visit home. Sure. And those are often like some of the most fun visits, you know, you kind of stroll into town, you blow in like a fucking hurricane, right? You see everybody all night long. You wake up late. Your mom fixes you breakfast. Breakfo yeah. popular. <laughs> that is what she calls it. I d- it's that's so funny. Oh, Aaron. What does she make me? She makes you uh, some scrambled eggs. Nice. Throws a little cheese on them. Some bacon. Toast. Some fruit, like some strawberries or whatever, you know. This is an incredible breakfast. It's fantastic, right? And it's great. It's like like those are like really, really great weekends, you know. This time's a little different. This time you go home and everything just kind of looks like it's stuck. You know, like, uh, like it's not keeping up with the rest of the world. And in a way, you kind of think like, oh, have I outgrown where I'm from? You know, the 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 places don't look as appealing as they used to. Yeah, your old wow. your old haunts, like the the places you and your friends would go. It's like I don't want to go there. I don't want to go to this place. Like. None of it appeals to you, and there are no other options for the current version of Pat. You feel very out of place. It's unsettling, even. Wow. So this is, like, really messing with me. Yeah, because it's never felt this way before. You know? It doesn't... The spirit of the place that resides within you does not live out there any longer and that's like a it's like kind of a sobering thought you know it's like a it's like it's something that can kind of like rattle you a little bit yeah so you you get into town on like a wednesday right you stay in the whole night you don't feel like going out you're at the airport you lost all the time you know the couple hours or whatever So you just kind of hang out with the family. You go to bed early. The next day you go to uh, like a, like a movie theater that you used to go to when you were younger, you know, and it's just like, oh yeah, yeah. It's kind of run down. Tyson's corner. Tyson's corner. Man, really? That was a, those are pretty good theaters. Dang. Yeah. That's what you, it's just, things aren't the same, you know? What's like the food Tyson's, court situation looking? There's a food court right outside of it. You got a you got a Sabaros. Oh no! Right. Um, you've got a uh, just like a random chicken teriyaki place. You know. Yeah. It's called it's called uh, Fangs Chicken. Okay. And they have one item on their menu. It is two scoops of teriyaki chicken and more rice. That a full grown cow can eat. Like, it's like always so much rice, you know? Can I tell them to hold off on the rice or? They do not like to be told what to do. You get that, you get a large drink. It's $10.99. It's crazy. Wow. So there's a a, a place called uh, We the Cookie People. (laughs) We the Cookie People. Yeah. Yeah. They are a uh, kind of like a right wing cookie establishment. You can get um, what? Yeah, every single Sunday morning, they uh, they bake like like cookie cakes, like the twelve inch cookie cakes, and they'll like have somebody draw like the Declaration of Independence or like a Bible verse, 
uh, smoking nine millimeter pistol. Jeez. They actually on those they actually like fire a gun over the top of the oh my god of the cookie cake, and then they like quickly put the cover on so it retains like some of the smoke from the air. So you know a lot of like it's like a hard like right wing cookie place called We the Cookie People. So the food court's doing okay, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, judging from the looks of it, it's not very busy. I mean, granted, it's like, you know, a Thursday during the day, but still there's like hardly anybody anywhere. The guy outside of Fang's Chicken has like a full plate of samples. Wow. You know, there's nobody to take any. Dang. And it's like, you know, those kind of like like malls or like outdoor malls, like those communal shopping experiences like people buy so much shit online anymore you know those are going by the wayside so yeah it is like depressing you know it's depressing mm. like you're you're just not it doesn't feel like home has ever really felt before and it really bums you out there is a uh there is like a restaurant inside tyson's corner that's still open like a sit-down joint it's called uh, the Flaming Broiler. Flaming Broiler. Yeah. They serve like, you know, burgers, sandwiches. You can get a fucking steak if you want it. Applebee's type fare. Oh, sure. They got a couple TVs hanging up on the walls. You got a couple games on. There's a bar you can sit at. You walk in and you're just kind of like, like, again, there's nobody hardly, there's like hardly anyone in there. Again, it's a Thursday, so whatever. But it's also like there, there should be someone here. There should be somebody else eating at this, this restaurant. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, it's yeah. never been like this, man. So you go, uh, you sit down at the at the bar. Bartender comes over. He goes, uh, "Hey, thanks for coming into the Flaming Broiler. My name is Stanley. What do you have to drink, my man?" Uh, I'll have some water, please. He goes, "You want ice? No ice." Um, yeah, some ice is fine. Thank you. He he uh he flips the bottle up in the air, or the glass rather. It's it's like it hangs in the air for just a split second. He looks into your eyes the whole time. He catches it behind his back. <laughs> Throws oh, some ice fuck. in there. Yeah. Puts the glass on the counter. And he, and he gives you a menu. He goes, take your time. Let me know when you're ready. Thanks, man. That was really cool. He goes, yeah, I was a uh, Las Vegas bartender of the year four years in a row. So uh, I know wow. some shit. That's cool. Yeah. So he like uh, kind of like walks out, you know, he steps away. You look over the menu. What do you get at a place like that? They got burgers, they got sandwiches, they got salads, they got a grill station, you know, they um, got a saute station, that kind so, of shit. Yeah, I guess what I would do is I would think about some kind of something involving chicken. Because yeah, they, I because yeah, it's cool to eat burgers, and I love burgers, and I love to eat burgers, but you just can't do it too often. Got to watch it. So probably, yeah, I'm so, yeah, that's my thing. If I eat out, I try to stay away from red meat. Every once in a while, I don't, you know? Yeah, yeah. So chicken, please. So they got like a, they got like a chicken sandwich, chicken on salad, so you get chicken with a couple of mixed vegetables, baked potato. It's got some kind of barbecue sauce element to it, you know? What do you order? Is there like a chicken sandwich? Yeah, chicken sandwich. Comes yeah. on a whole whole wheat roll, chipotle aioli, pepper jack cheese, lettuce, nice. tomato, pickle. Fuck yes, I would love one of those. And I'm, you know what? I'm gonna get a side of piping hot French fries, please. He goes coming right up. Thank sort you. of like you know, takes the menu. He takes the menu. He like spins it on his finger like a basketball. He like twirls it. And he like slaps it and keeps it going. <laughs> he moves it between all four of his fingers. Oh, and man. And then he just snatches it out of the air and he goes, I'll put that in right now. And he walks away. Whoa. 
you kind of sit there with like your jaw dropped a little bit. It's crazy what people right? can do. And you didn't recognize it, but there is somebody else there at the bar, an older guy. He kind of laughs. He goes, is that your first time seeing him? He kind of laughs. He goes, uh, I know that look. Yeah. Swirls a couple of uh, ice cubes around in a rocks glass. Some brown liquor inside of it. Okay. He gets up. He uh, walks over, sits down next to you. He goes, this your first time in here? It is. He's like, to be frank, it's the closest bar to my house that I can walk from. He goes, not that I do, but okay. that's what I tell myself. He, uh, he goes, uh, what'd you order? What'd you get? I got the chicken sandwich with some fries. Any good? He goes, he goes, it's my absolute favorite. Oh, wow. You kind of look up at the television. There's a football game on. You see, uh, you see a guy like try to kick a field goal and he kicks it and it uh, ends up like he makes it like it, it's like a kick is good. And uh, it shows like it goes into the stands and it hits a guy right in the fucking balls and just drops <laughs> it. Right. He's not, wearing, he's not wearing a shirt. Right. It hits his chin on the railing, drops oh. his beer, just fucking annihilates this guy. Right. There was no net in place or did it burst through it? Uh, there's not, there's not a net in place for these. This is the all jail football league. So, you know, oh. they don't have like all the trappings of like a normal NFL game. Holy shit. Like nets, you know, oh, that's like man. part of the appeal. Like, like if you come to, if you come to a game, there's a ball's coming to the stands, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be ready for it. Wow. Okay. And this guy just gets fucking wrecked. Right. So you, you both look up at it and you just kind of laugh and you go, yeah. holy shit. Yeah, and he and this guy almost spits out his drink. He goes, "Oh my god!" They they got they have like a tight shot on the fan. He's just throwing up. He's you know, vomiting. Right? <laughs> oh no, poor guy. He's just vomiting. He's got a yeah. His pants are wet. Like it just really did a number on him. Oh no. So you guys kind of laugh. He takes another sip of his drink and he uh he, he goes, "Cheers to the misery of another human being." You guys, you know, cheers your your water, soda, or whatever. What a fucking thing to say. You think that for a second, but then you go, well, he's not wrong. But you take a drink. Okay. You, uh, the bartender comes back over and he goes, give me another one. Pours a, you see he's got like a bottle of whiskey. He pours, he, you know, he pours a glass. What kind of the guy kind of raises his hand to stop. Huh? What kind of whiskey is it? It's called uh uh Brother Pete's cousin fucker whiskey. Oh my god. Yeah. Brother Pete's is uh jeez. They make whiskey the way that people did when they you know married within their family. But it's why? like an old name it's it like that. An, because they want people to recognize that this ain't your daddy's moonshine you know they didn't have to bring incest into it i mean it's really but that, that's what they're they're saying they're like this and you know th this comes from a time when incest was more accepted i mean and to be frank the pendulum is swinging back in that direction now it's never been more popular in our lifetimes but Prior to this, you know, it was more acceptable, especially in, you know, more rural cultures where that was a bigger part of the economy. So, yeah, that's OK. Whatever. Brother, I mean, Brother Pete's cousin fucker whiskey. Why call it cousin fucker? Because I mean, that's... when you take a shot at this. You either scream the word cousin fucker. <laughs> or you feel it in your soul. That's what their advertising says. You kind of you kind of look at at the bottle, and then you look at the the guy sitting next to you. He goes, "I don't know why it's my favorite. It's just, just what I like. Just an insane thing to say." Yeah, he goes, "Trust me, I hate order. I hate ordering it." And then he goes, and he points to the bartender. And he goes, "And this son of a bitch makes me say it every time I come in here." The bartender laughs. He goes, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, I'm in the middle of some very complicated. They kind of laugh. Yeah. Right. Okay, I guess they're the uh the man there. kind of leans over to you. He goes, uh, name's uh he goes. By the way, my name's uh Doctor Doctor Dodge Dodge Caravan. You're sitting at the bar next to Dr. Dodge Caravan. And uh, you know him already. See, Dr. Dodge Caravan was like in academia, right? He taught at Harvard, right? He was a guest lecturer at Stanford. Like he he had, you know, spent some time at MIT. Like the guy was everywhere. He was considered one of the, the brightest young minds in all of science. Wow. He, he was in like environmental studies and he he'd been talking about, you know, greenhouse gases and CO2 and climate change. He's been talking about it for years. He's like, I've got I know I know backwards and forwards. He was one of the country's premier experts on environmental sciences. And then Chrysler Dodge decided to release a model of minivan called the caravan. And it ruined his fucking life. The existence of the Dodge Caravan basically <laughs> drove Dr. Dodge Caravan out of academia, and he wound up becoming a substitute at your high school. And he kind of looks over at you, and he smiles, and he goes, Dean, right? He goes, I yeah. think I only had you a few times. Yep. I remember so you, you. Were always a, he was, you were always a bright young man. Thank he kind of like, instead of like uh, shaking your hand, he kind of pats you on the arm. He goes, it's good to see you, my friend. Yeah, good to see you too. So you, uh, he takes a sip of his cousin fucker whiskey. Uh. Your uh, your chicken sandwich comes out, piping, hot, crispy, French fries on the side. Fuck yeah. To the point that, like, when you when you move your hand over them, you can feel the heat just radiating off of them, still wet from the fryer. Yeah, I'd have to use a fork and knife, I think, on these for the first few minutes at least. You think that to yourself. Dr. Dodge Caravan whistles. He goes, now that's a hot plate of fries. He reaches over the bar. He grabs a set of rolled up silverware and hands it to you. Thank you. He goes, of course. He goes, ketchup, mustard. I know where it all is. Yeah, why are you doing? Yeah, I'd love some ketchup. Uh, he reaches reaches over the bar, grabs ketchup, puts it there. Thanks, man. Right. You you pop the cap and you squeeze and it comes out instantly. There's no pushing air out. There's no fart in the bottle. Like you're just like it's immediate. Immediate. As ketchup. soon as you, as soon as you let go, it stops. It's like the most responsive ketchup bottle you've ever felt in your whole fucking life. <laughs> it must be what well, it must be like going from like driving a Ford to a Ferrari, you know? Okay. Wow. It's just like it just yields to your touch. As mm -hmm. soon as you even think about ending the stream, it's done. It's just so responsive. Dr. Dodge takes a sip off of his drink and he goes, Well, not to be, you know pushy or anything. He goes, but well, most people don't find their way to this shithole. He's like, why are you here? And you kind of think about it and you tell him how you're like, you're visiting home, you know, and like, it just doesn't feel like it's the same. And for like the first time in your adult life, you feel like you may have outgrown the place you're from. And this is, you know, this whole diatribe about where you are in relation to the place. Dr. Dodge Caravan. Looks at his uh, glass and swirls his ice cube around in it, kind of peering over his glasses. And he said, Dean, how old are you? And you tell him. Yeah. At this time, you're like 42. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I think I'm 42. He looks at you and he uh, he goes, 71. He was all this angst. All this tension you feel between you and the place that you're from, he was pile another 30 years on top of it. He takes a drink. He goes, Jeez. it never gets better. 
fuck. He goes, you only get further away. Why are you telling? Why are you saying all this to me? And he goes, and then you wonder, is it me or is it them? He goes, who's who's got the problem here? He say, he says, am I out of touch with reality? Or is reality just not worth touching anymore? I think at that point I would just just eat my sandwich in silence. This is so you, good. Uh, you sit there, you eat your sandwich, you take a you go to take a bite out of it. And he goes, Man, I'm really sorry. <laughs> He's like he goes, man. I had a couple he goes, I had a couple of drinks. He goes, I, I can definitely relate to the way you're feeling. Sure. Because I he goes, I feel it every day. He he goes, Guess what was here when I was half your age? He goes, a fucking field. He goes, this was a field. He and he kind of points around. He goes, all this shit was a field. He goes, and now it's the dying carcass of a, a monument to capitalism. It's a dead mall. He goes, and for what? He was to placate a few people, to make a few people a few more bucks. Takes just, another drink. I just keep eating. Yeah. So you're you're eating and he's like talking, you know. And he tells you stories about like the things that have changed since he was a kid. And honestly, like you didn't think twice about him as like a substitute. Sure. He's like a very he's like a very genuine person and he seems okay. like a really nice guy. In the middle of his uh, you know, his, his sort of spiel, he grabs a uh he grabs like a a server's tablet and he goes, you want some mozzarella sticks? He goes, if I get some, will you have some with me? Yeah, absolutely. So he, he places an order by himself, right? He knows how the POS works, right? So he keeps going, right? He's telling you just about like, you know, how, when, when he was a kid, this was a two lane road and you know, you, you hung out with your friends so the street lights came on and you know there there was people just weren't afraid and he talks about like just how like everything has changed it's become so much more densely populated in this area and yeah and it's hard to get around and again he's like just talking about experiencing things from your point of view as well but from a significantly uh further back point in time yeah it's the same feelings it's just like times whatever yeah and you're kind of you're kind of telling him like, oh, you know, like all the places that I went with my friends when I was younger, he goes, none of them appeal to me anymore, you know. And and he's like, well, cherish it while you have it, because someday those places will be gone, and there will be something new in its stead that that you won't have any memories within. You kind of think about it. And you're like, yeah, maybe I should like just be thankful that like relics of my past are still here. And that I can go to those places and I can, you know, re-experience that again in a way if I want to. Yeah, I think I would like start going to those places and like take photos of them. So you kind of like you you tell that to Dr. Dodge and he was like, you're a photographer, huh? No, not really. He was uh, I he was like dabbled in it for a while, but I could never keep up with anything. He finishes his drink at the exact same time you wipe the last crumbs from your fucking lips. You kind of like <clears throat> raise your hand to get your check. Yeah. It comes over. Dr. Dodge puts his hand on it. He's like, no. He goes, thank you for the company. It's on me. Are you sure? He's like, I insist. So he pays for it. He goes, can I show you a place? That means a lot to me. That is still the way it was when I was young. He goes, I'll have you back here in no time. Sure. He goes, great. He pays a tab, leaves a hundred percent tip. <laughs> you guys go out. He has a mint 1993 Dodge Caravan. <laughs> wait hold on so if this his name ruined his life but the, yeah. why would he have a dodge why would dr dodge caravan have a dodge caravan then you ask him that and he goes they gave it to me 
Because once they heard my story, he said, Dodd just gave it to me. And he, he goes, what am I going to do? Waste a van? No, I, I mean, you could sell whatever. I, I would just go, OK, I wouldn't. You get in and this thing is pristine. Like it just rolled off the fucking showroom floor. You get in, buckle your seatbelt. He turns on the van, fires right up. Very quiet. Bob Seger's greatest hits cassette comes on over the stereo. It's a cassette. I know it's a cassette. Yeah, you look at it. It's a cassette. I mean, you can see right there, you know. You look at the radio, it's a cassette. Yeah, of course, this fucking guy's got a cassette. Well, yeah, it's like a 93 fucking van, you know? Yeah. Against the wind plays. <laughs> he goes, watch yourself. And you hear the hum of the motor that lets down the two windows in the front. You look over, he's got his fingers on the buttons. He backs out of the parking lot, puts it in drive, and heads south. You guys drive for about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Get a little out of the way, you know? There's like a, a hilly area that you've never really like been too much, just being like as far south as you are. It just like wasn't like a place that you would go to. You might have passed by it, certainly probably never through it. Yeah. Yeah, we always kept it pretty close to home growing up. Yeah. So you uh you know, you would go to this wooded area, you sort of climb up in those Virginia hills. The light dances across the road as it filters through all the leaves of the trees. You drive up these hills for a few minutes and you come up to this clearing. And you look out on the clearing and you can see from like miles. And you can see McLean and you can see like you swear you can see the Hamlet. You're like, oh, it's right there. You know, you're like, I know where yeah. it is. And the sun is setting and you and Dr. Dodge Caravan sit on the hood of that 93 Dodge Caravan. And he just admired the sunset as it sinks down over McLean. And Dr. Dodge says, Remember this moment because it'll never be this young again, and neither will you. Man, I am getting so. I gotta be honest with you. I'm getting fed up with this guy and his fatalistic bullshit. I would I wouldn't say anything, but I would just go, "Oh, yeah. okay." But in my head, I'd be like, "This fucking guy." You think that to yourself, yeah. right? So you kind of sit there. Day turns into night. And you just kind of sit there in silence and you do think about it. You know, you, I mean, again, he's not necessarily wrong, you know, I know, but why even, why we talk, why even, you know, but you think about it and you think about like how your relationship with the place is complicated sometimes and that, uh, you know, it's probably not going to get any better as you get older. You think, but I am thankful for what is still here. You know, and if that's my friends and my family and the people who I know, so be it. I'll make the best out of it. And you kind of sit there and after thinking about it for a while, you just kind of feel renewed. You know, it feels good where you're like, OK, I'm going to approach the rest of my time here knowing that things have changed, but I'm going to embrace the change and accept it for what it is. Like is. I'm going to fall in love again with McLean. Oh, man. You kind of you get up off of that hood of that Dodge Caravan. Put your feet back on the Virginia ground. And you go, I think it's time we head out, doctor. And he goes, yeah, I think you're right. He gets in <clears throat> into the into the front seat again, fires up pristine Dodge Caravan. Seeger. Against the wind. Zoom in against the wind. You know. Well, thanks for taking me there. That was really pretty. It's kind of made he's me like, decide to love McLean again, I guess. So he's like driving through these hills, right? And you say that to him and he's like, hey, no problem. I get it. And you look over and he's kind of like slurring his speech a little bit. And then he drives uh, off the road. <laughs> no, and you guys like drive up a hill. And as you fall, you look down at the pointiest 
Rock, oh, no. you've seen in your whole fucking life. Oh shit! You fly face first into the you tip of the of the jagged one, the most legendary pointy rock in the history of North America, as rated by Pointy Rock Monthly. You uh, fly face first into the jagged one, the uh, tip of, of the of the fucking rock. Oh. through the windshield it splinters uh. in two and runs uh runs through your head and dr dodge caravan's head and it pins both of you guys in the back of your chair oh it my just is god there. the van eventually catches fire and just roasts the two of you guys over then and you guys like slowly roast over the stone slowly and you guys roast? become delicious for the ravenous creatures that live at the bottom of the jagged one they taste your fat as it runs down the mountain Oh my! They God. climb up and they devour your carcasses within hours. Ah! Oh. And McLean kills you. It takes this you. Fucking guy! <laughs> you died with Doctor Dodge Caravan. He was drunk as fuck. I, didn't, I guess. I yeah, he was known. fucking drinking the whole time. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot that he was pounding. What was that <laughs> shitty with? God damn, cousin, man. cousin, brother, brother, Pete's cousin, fucker, whiskey. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you died there. Well, I mean, I died with a positive, my new positive outlook, at least. I guess that's you died with a rock through your face, pinning pinning your skull to that pristine headrest of that 1993 Dodge Caravan passenger seat. Well, it's not so pristine anymore. Not even thirty thousand miles on it. What a waste. <laughs>